Grace and peace. Welcome to Rehoboth Temple Church of Christ Facebook live stream. On behalf of our pastor and first lady, Apostle Bradford Berry and Lady Norma Berry and the entire Rehoboth Temple Church family, we thank you for tuning in. We are the church in the heart of the city with the city in our heart. Visit our website at RehobothTempleChurch.org or reach us by phone by calling 614-252-8219. You can listen to Rehoboth Temple Church services via our Hope Line Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. On Saturdays, you may submit prayer requests and join us for prayer at 10 a.m. The Hope Line number is 712 712- 432-3900. The access code is 646-188-POUND. If you would like to sow a seed to our ministry, you can do so via our website, RehobothTempleChurch.org, and via Givelify. You can give in person on Mondays from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. at the church. While giving in person, you can also utilize our Clover Giving by using a debit card or credit card. As always, you can send your gifts via the mail to Rehoboth Temple Church of Christ, 1111 East Long Street, Post Office Box 83326. Columbus, Ohio, 43203. We pray that what you hear and see blesses you. Without further ado, hear ye the word of the Lord. Once again, welcome to the Holy Temple, and on today we'll be having prayer led by Sister Deborah Smith. We're praying for families that are grieving. We're praying for families that are looking for the Lord to do something very special in their lives. Following our prayer by Sister Deborah Smith, we'll have announcements by Brother Ron Bryan. Every head is bowed and every heart is lifted. Let's go to the Praise the Lord, everybody. The Bible admonishes us, is, us to give thanks unto the Lord. It says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. Then, then I believe the second verse says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Today, I invite you into our service, those who have been redeemed, and say so. That we go into prayer right now to pray for our nation, the bereaved family. We're praying for Sister Wilma Carter's family and her daughter, Michelle, especially. We've lost a valiant soldier out of our midst, and we're praying for that family. Earnestly, we're seeking God for you. We're, we're, we're going to go before God to ask him for blessings upon this nation. We are about to, in a couple of weeks, turn that curve in the history, in our history. In a few more days, we're about to embark on something that is going to be detrimental to us as a nation of people. Amen? Amen. And we, as the saints of God, need to keep our ears open and eyes and listen to the voice of God. We need to see God like never before. So we invite you into our service as we begin to pray that you come in, that we, that God have a seat with us, that we invite him here into your homes, wherever you are, and that you join with us in prayer. Would you do that for us, please? Father God, in the name of Jesus, we're coming before you, God, as only we know how. Asking you, O oh God, for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you, O oh God, that you've allowed us this day to give you praise. Can't nobody do us like you can, Father. And today, the saints of God in this place, in Rehoboth Temple, come to give you praise. We thank you, O oh God, for your goodness and your mercy. For how you've kept us, O oh God. You didn't have to do it, but you did. You saw fit, oh God, to give us another day so that we can rise and give you glory. Now, God, we invite you into this service today. Come on in and have a seat with us. Sup with us, oh God. Do you walk up and down the pews, God, as we see them here and, and go in and out of every household that's listening on the line, on the Facebook and on the Hope Line. God, we need you today. 
We're coming before you, God, as only we know and as, as humble as we know how, beseeching you, oh God, to do the impossible things for us. God, we know because we have evidence of you being a healer. We have evidence, God, of you being a deliverer. We have a evidence, God, of you being merciful and gracious to us. We know the God that we serve. And God, now we beseech you as only we know how, because we are the redeemed of you, O oh God. And we pray, O oh God, that you might have a listening ears to the prayers that's going out before the people right now. God, we pray, we're praying for this nation of ours. We're praying for the White House, the State House, our houses, the church house. God, we're praying, oh God, that you come and sit with those, oh God. We're, we're praying for those in high places, as you admonished us to do. God, we're praying for the sick among us today, those who have lost loved ones and, and the bereaved of us. Go now, God, and, and comfort the Carter family right now. Wrap your arms around them, God, as only you can. Let them know that you'll be, that weeping may endure for a night, but the joy of the Lord is going to come in the morning. Comfort them with those words, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Be with us today, O oh God, as we go to and fro, as we come here and listen to the word to be strengthened. God, we come in to hear the word in our hearts and in our minds. But God, as we go out there among the people, help us to remember that we're going out as servants for you. To go, we're going, God, to compel men and women to be saved. Now, O oh God, we pray that you might bless the preach word that's going to go before us today. Remember Bishop and his family. Remember Lady Berry. God bless us only you know how. Let the word reach somebody, oh God, and compel men to come and say, what must I do to be saved? Bless, oh God, according to your will, according to your word, according to your way, oh God. And we'll be careful to give your name the praise. We ask this all in the name of Jesus.
Christ is worthy of the praise. Jesus Christ is worthy. Jesus Christ is worthy. Jesus Christ is worthy of the
leaning, 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 leaning on Jesus. Leaning, oh, leaning, 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 leaning on Jesus. Leaning, oh. And praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. We have a couple quick announcements. Just want to put this in your hearing. It is voting time. It is voting time. The Near East Collaboration of Churches will take your soul to the poll to vote. That's going to take place Monday, October 26th through Friday, October 30th. Then again, on Monday, November 2nd, we're going to provide seniors with curbside early voting at the Franklin County Board of Elections located at 1700 Morris Road. You can call 614-653-8799. Again, that number is 614-653-8799. Nine, nine to schedule your ride to the poll to vote. We are taking our souls to the polls to get the vote out for election day. We're servicing seniors who need a ride to the polls. These are the seniors from the Near East area. And coming up in just one week from today, that is next Sunday, we're going to be having our third parking lot praise. In this particular parking lot praise, we're going to be fellowshipping with Eliezer Church of Christ of the Apostolic Faith and we want to make sure that you are here. We are going to be assembling in our parking lot and you have an opportunity to bring your own lawn chair so you can sit on the grassy area and enjoy service. We are going to be singing, we're going to be praising, we're going to be ministering, we're going to be testifying. Old time testimony service. We're going to have a wonderful time next Sunday, the Sunday, the 25th of October. It's Parking Lot Praise. Thank you so very much and thank you for listening. Once again, we want to welcome you. It's a privilege, it's an honor to come into your homes, your cars, wherever you're listening to us, uh, whatever social platform uh, you're on today, we want to thank God for you. And we want you to know that you're listening to the voice of Rehoboth Temple, located at 1111 East Long Street, right here in the heart of Columbus, Ohio, and certainly the city of Columbus knows that we have them in our hearts. It's so glad, we're so glad that we can come before you once again and bless you with a word from the Lord. And certainly if we ever needed a word from the Lord, we sure do need it now. And so we praise and we honor God for all of his mercies and his grace, his goodness. We're praying for families that are bereaved, our own Carter family on this week, we're praying for you. And we're praying for those that have been uh, diagnosed with this COVID-19 virus. We know God is a healer, he's a keeper, and God can do anything but fail. So once again, coming into your homes, your cars, we're so thankful, and we bless God for allowing you to have the opportunity to hear us and allowing us to be able to share a word from the Lord with you. We thank God for those selections from our men's choir. God bless you. And they'll be coming back, so don't, 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 don't change that state dial, don't change that platform, don't surf, because they're coming back, our men's choir will be coming back. And once again, we want you to turn with us on this morning uh, to the book of Acts, 19th chapter. And we're going to be looking in verses 1 and 2. Acts, 19th chapter, verses 1 and 2. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, <clears throat> We have not so much heard whether there be any Holy Ghost going to ask the Lord to bless his word and sanctify it in our hearts. And we'd like to take emphasis, put emphasis on verse number two. He said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And our subject, our thought for this morning is going to be a very simple phrase, have you got it? Mm -hmm. 
I want you to uh, make some comments now. Pleasantville, Katrina, make some comments. Get a watch party going. Debbie, get a watch party going in Reynoldsburg. If you're on the north side, south side, get a watch party going. Let somebody know that they have to answer the question, have you got it? Just type those words into your comments, and let's get excited about the Word of God on this morning. The 19th chapter of the book of Acts begins by introducing to us Apollos, who had the reputation of being an elegant speaker and teacher. He was educated in Alexandria, Egypt, which was a center for religious training. Apollos taught that Jesus was the Messiah and was fervent or passionate in his teaching. He was sincere in what he believed, and the word of God says that he was mighty in the scriptures. His only problem was that he did not know about the power of God's spirit working in the lives of believers. In Ephesus, Apollos met with a husband and wife ministry team, Priscilla and Aquila. They were students of Paul, the Apostle Paul. They took the time to expound the way of God more perfectly to him. Priscilla and Aquila gave Apollos a clear understanding of the work of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer. Now, while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul was in Ephesus and met disciples who were taught by John and baptized into John's baptism. These disciples had not heard that the Holy Ghost had fallen on the day of Pentecost in Jerusalem and knew nothing about the water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. John's baptism focused on repentance and prepared believers for the coming of Christ. It did not identify with the life, death, burial, or resurrection of Jesus. John's baptism unto repentance focused on the one who was coming. Baptism in the name of Jesus focuses on the one who already came. John's baptism declared Pentecost would come at some future time. The baptism in the name of Jesus declares Pentecost has already come and opened the doors of the church. Apollos and the 12 disciples had both come under the teaching of John the Baptist. They both had a common problem. They were believers, but had no knowledge of the work of the Holy Spirit. And so to understand the problem more clearly, let us take a look at the work of the Spirit. Jesus was empowered by the Spirit before he began his ministry. His primary concern was to make disciples and baptize them with his Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is given to every born-again believer who professes faith in Jesus Christ. To be baptized with the Spirit and be filled with the Spirit are necessary ingredients for complete salvation. This experience began on the day of Pentecost and will continue until the second coming of Christ. Baptism of the Holy Spirit places believers into the body of Christ, and it gives believers the power to live a victorious life in Christ in spite of temptation. The Holy Spirit has been given to certain individuals in the Old Testament to empower them to do specific works for the Lord. All of the major and minor prophets who were chosen by God were given his spirit to complete their assignment. Neither Apollos or John's disciples had knowledge of the work of the Holy Spirit. Their knowledge was limited to what they were taught by John. Paul's question to the disciples was, have you received since you believed? The implication was that believing would result in receiving the power of God in its fullness, which is the Holy Spirit. Some would argue that these disciples could not have been true believers and not receive the Spirit of God. True believers can be sincere and not have a complete knowledge or revelation of the will of God. Both Apollos and the 12 disciples were products of limited information. They did not purposely or intentionally disobey God's will. 
Sincerity leads to loyalty, but does not always lead to truth. Paul's question, restated is, when you believed, what did you receive? And a literal translation of Paul's question is, having believed, did you receive the Holy Spirit? Another way to ask the same question is, did you receive the Holy Spirit after you believed? In everyday contemporary vernacular, we might ask the question, have you got it? This is a sensitive question to ask in a COVID-19 environment, but I'm not inquiring concerning your physical health or asking that you have been tested for COVID-19. My question is, what have you received since you believed? The disciples' response was that we have not heard that the Holy Spirit was given. They did not con contest the need for the Holy Spirit, nor did they refute Paul's further instructions. Once again, thank you, Lady B. It's not what you know, but what you do with what you know Amen. that really matters. Amen. It's also important to note that Paul never condemned the disciples for what they believed. We can conclude that he considered the disciples' belief to be sincere, and what they believed was good enough for them, but not good enough for now. Let me repeat that. Paul never condemned the disciples for what they believed. He never rebuked them. And so we, what can, we can conclude by that is that the disciples had a sincere belief. They were sincere about what they believed. And what they believed was good enough for then, but not good enough for now. Paul baptized the disciples in the name of the Lord Jesus and laid hands on them, which means he prayed for them and they received the Holy Spirit. Thus, there is an interval of time between their belief in Christ and being filled with the Spirit. If you believe and have not yet received, the good news is that it's not too late. If you want it, you can have it. You still have time. This event happened 25 years after Pentecost. Some call it the second Pentecost. It is consistent with what takes place on today. Those who believe on Christ receive the power of his spirit. And they are baptized by the spirit into the body of Christ. We live in, an a in the age of the spirit. The Old Testament period was the age of the father. When the apostles wrote the Gospels, it was the age of the Son. But from Pentecost until the second coming of Christ is the age of the Spirit. We live in an information age where technology affords us the ability to get information quick, fast, and in a hurry. Yeah. In biblical times, there was no cell phone, laptop computers, internet, or social media platforms. So it's not difficult to understand why sincere disciples would not have heard or did not know that the Holy Spirit had been given. The reality is that many believers today have not been acquainted with the Holy Spirit because of a lack of information and instruction. In spite of all the sources, in spite of all the technology, in spite of all the information, we still have to ask the question, have you got it? Wow. Many believers have not heard through the grapevine that all sincere believers receive the Holy Spirit. It is the source of joy, boldness, and power to do God's will. It is also the source of strength to live godly and to live a lifestyle in a world filled with temptation and evil. Once again, it gives boldness. It gives joy. It's a source of strength to live a godly lifestyle in a world filled with temptation and evil. It's the same power that raised Jesus from the grave. And if you have it, will it be the same power to raise you again from the enemy called death. The scripture reminds us that when the Holy Ghost comes, you shall have power and you shall be my witness. The Holy Spirit is the greatest power a believer will ever receive to tell about the goodness of the Lord. The Holy Spirit empowers the believer 
to witness about the wonderful works of Jesus Christ. The question once again, have you got it? It may just be a matter of not having the right information. But now that you know, what are you going to do? New information is only beneficial when we're willing to change our thinking and adjust to what is good and profitable. When we refuse to act on what we know, we miss the blessings that we can have. Once again, if you refuse to act on what you know, when you refuse to act on good information, when you refuse to act on the right information, it can cause you to lose the blessings that God wants to give. There are three types of individuals who hear God's word, and there are three types of people that you meet every Sunday in church. The first type, those who are non-believers because they have not accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. They may come occasionally or be regular members of a church. They have not repented and given their hearts to Jesus Christ. They may have an intellectual belief in Christ, but they have not surrendered their lives to Jesus. They are not filled with the Spirit, and they are not members of the body of Christ. The second type are those who were once sincere believers, but have drifted away from doing God's will. They belong to the category of believers found in the church at Ephesus. In the book of Revelation, Apostle John says, they lost their first love. They're warned to repent and return to their first works. They have lost their connection with the true vine, which is Christ. They no longer are guided and directed by the Spirit of God. And the third type, those are believers who are committed. They are committed believers. They are dedicated to do the will of God. They produce good works because they allow the Holy Spirit to work in their lives and produce good fruit. They continually manifest and are filled with the Spirit and they continually manifest the fruit of the Spirit. They walk by faith and not by sight. They possess and are filled with the Spirit of God. They know they have eternal life because when the Holy Ghost came, it showed some signs. Amen. And they know that their names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Wow. Another significant point about Paul's question, have you received since you believe, is that it suggests that believers know or they have tangible evidence that they have received the Spirit of God. As far as Paul was concerned, the evidence was that they spoke in tongues after he laid hands on them. It was the same evidence on the day of Pentecost when those who were in the upper room received the Holy Spirit. They came out looking like they were drunk with new wine. They prophesied, they praised God, and they spoke in other tongues. Let's evaluate what happened and apply it to what we've learned. Right. Number one, true disciples are sincere in what they believe, and they act on what they are taught. John's disciples were baptized unto repentance. Number two, true disciples who are, are limited in what they have been taught can be open-minded and progress beyond what they know. John's disciples believed in Jesus and received further instructions from Paul. Number three, they were baptized in water in the name of the Lord Jesus. John's disciples were baptized a second time. Number four, after Paul laid his hands on them, they were baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. In other words, a person can know if they have been baptized with the Holy Spirit, the evidence is that the disciples all spoke with tongues. The Holy Spirit is accompanied by tangible evidence. Yeah. The Holy Spirit always comes some, shows some signs. When the Holy Spirit came on them, they began speaking in tongues, prophesying. It was visible proof that they had received the Holy Spirit. 
Once again, the Holy Spirit always will show some signs of you might dance, you might well, sing, you yeah. might clap your hands, well, you might pat your feet, but there's a feeling on the inside that'll work on the outside. It's like a wheel in the middle of yes, a wheel. Sir. It's like fire shut up in your bones. When you get it, you know it, because there will be, there has to be some signs. Well, Let's compare COVID-19 with the Holy Spirit to contemporize the message. Many people have contracted the COVID-19 virus because of misinformation or lack of information about the virus. You can have it and be asymptomatic, which means you show no signs or symptoms of having the virus. The virus is highly contagious because it is an airborne disease and the virus has a very high fatality rate, higher than seasonal flu or other seasonal diseases, which many people don't believe in spite of scientific information. Mm -hmm. There are also simple steps that we can take to mitigate the spread of COVID-19. We can practice hand hygiene, which means wash your hands. We can wear face masks in public, and we can practice social distancing when possible and avoid crowds. These are simple steps from reliable public health officials who specialize in infectious diseases. How we decide to use the information may be a matter of life or death. Yes. Failure to believe can have dire consequences for families and friends. Yes. Now, according to God's word, let's look at what we know about the Holy Spirit. Yes. Number one, it's not asymptomatic. If you have it, you'll know it. If you have it, there'll be some signs. If you have it, there's a feeling on the inside that you can't deny. Number two, the Holy Spirit is not contagious. You can't pass it from person to person. You've got to get it for yourself. But you've got to know that you know that you know that something happened in my life. There's a change that I can't deny. And number three, the Holy Spirit saves lives. Whosoever believes on Jesus will have everlasting life. And out of their belly shall flow rivers of living water. These are simple steps that you can take to enter into the kingdom of God. You can repent of your sins, be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ, receive the Holy Spirit by faith in Jesus. These are steps that every believer must take to go from believing to receiving. These are steps that every believer must take. These are steps that every believer must take to go from receiving to believing. God wants his power to rest on you. God wants his power to abide in you. And the scripture reminds us that if any man has not his spirit, he does not belong to me. And so once again, ask somebody the question, send somebody the comments, just write on whatever platform you're using the words, have you got it? Mm. The spirit indwells or lives in you. Have you got it? Does the spirit live on the inside and work on the outside? Is your body a temple of the Holy Ghost? Yeah. Uh, the spirit seals the believer. Yes. Are you sealed until the day of redemption? Do you belong to God and are you a child by God, of God, because you've been adopted into the family of Jesus Christ? And number three, the Holy Spirit empowers the believer for life and service, which is dedicated to God. Sin no longer has power over the believer. The believer will have victory in this life and in that life which is to come. I'm reminded of a song in my conclusion Long ago, I did not know about Jesus and his love. I heard about it, but never tasted the manna from above. But when this life of sin, you can no longer stand, I ask the question, how can I get to know the man? Yeah. You must be, don't you see? You've got to be born again. You must have that fire, Holy Ghost, burning and keeps your prayer world turning. It's the kind of religion that you cannot deceive. It's the kind of religion that comes when you believe. Don't you see? 
that you gotta be born again. It makes you dance, it makes you shout, it makes you say, I've been born again once again. You've got to be born again. You've got to be filled with the Spirit. You've got to have the power of the Holy Ghost. You've got to have something on the inside that works on the outside. You've got to know that you know that you know I'm a child of God. Lift your hands and say, I've got it because I've been born again. Once again, Saints, we want to welcome you back to these services and this live stream. Quick announcement as we begin to close out this service. Services for our dear sister Wilma Carter are going to be taking place at the Marlon Gary Chapel East. Marlon Gary East. And that's going to take place next Saturday on the 24th. Viewing and the services are private for family only. However, you can check out the live screen of the service that live stream of the service is going to take place at the Marlon Gary website. All you have to do is click on the East location to view the service. Our homegoing services for Sister Wilma Carter are next Saturday, October 24th. solid rock when I found Christ oh yes I did oh I found me a solid rock